I'll call this meeting of the Black Hawk County Board of Supervisors to order. Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Hall? Yeah. Here. Leyland? Here. Little? Little? Here. We have a few days up here. Belka? Here. Schwartz? Here. Uh, please join us for a moment of silence to reflect on today's action. One day and then a wall on a two coat the walls. So that. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first to entertain a motion on the agenda as received, as proposed, or amended. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion or questions? <coughs> None. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, the agenda is approved. Next, we'll move on to public uh, comments. If there's anybody uh, in the boardroom, uh, we'll first start <coughs> and we'll go online. Uh, please state your name and address. Aaron Stacy Roberts, 411 Almond Street. I've been down several times before on my concerns with uh, threats and intimidation and me not being able to get insistence in matters that should be looked into criminally. Most recent is ESPRO 006003, where there was 109 acres of farmland sold in Buchanan County, in which I'm an heir to, and now I'm the administrator over it, and I have a court date to be back in court trying to get the uh, sale recruits uh, in July. What I'm finding in this matter is the same in the case in which, let me get the case number, MHO 13288, in which Dan Trackle played a part in having me put in a mental committal. The two common denominators between the two cases is the judge that's over it. Kellyanne LaCar. In both cases, she has violated my constitutional right to due process equal and fair protection under law. In the ESPO case, the farmland, I didn't get a notice to appeal the sale, nor did I get a sign, sign a family settlement agreement, which I never would have when we didn't get fair market value for the farm. Got less than 300000 for 109 acres, well over 1.3 Three million. In the MHO case, I was red flagged by Dan Trackle and some lady named Sharice Atkins, which we don't have a red flag law in the state of Iowa. I've had a person committed before and it takes a family member. What I'm trying to get to is when she's violating, as well as Dan Trackle being the head of safety, the safety director at that time, and he should know something a little bit about constitutional law as mentioned to him by uh, Tony Thompson in the last election when they ran against each other, how he violated my rights. And doing that is, that is treason. I don't know whether you know yourself or not, uh, Chairman, but it needs to be investigated. The criminal activity that sits in this board, as well as our city council, and our sheriff's office, and our police department when he was acting as the chief, and still there. We need to look into the criminal aspect of it, and I want to give you an example of something you might be able to use. I see your time's just about up. On May 20th of 1948, by the order, by the request of the members of the Black Hawk County and also the Waterloo Police, they contacted Governor Ray and asked for assistance after my grandfather was accused of killing a person at the raft riot. This is involving our elected officials and law enforcement people. You need to contact the governor and see if they can start with some help. And if you would, being I've explained everything to a lady by the name of Anna, and she told me to have my children call her. <laughs> when I'm telling them they've been living under Stockholm Syndrome since case 9914612, which we also have interest in. That's the rape and kidnapping of my daughter. And I'm out of time, and I'll be back next week so I can finish. But I will look for you to contact someone up outside of this circle. Have a good night. All right, thank you. Uh, is there anybody else in the boardroom uh, with public comment today? Uh, is there anybody on Zoom that wishes to make a public comment on something that's not an agenda item? All right, 
Seeing none, we will now move on to the uh, claims and payments. This is a resolution that the Board of Supervisors approve expenditures and that the county auditor be authorized and directed to issue checks against the various settlement of such claims as allowed. So moved. Second. They're moved and seconded. Uh, Mr. Veter. Hey, the total for the claims this week is $504,810.07 uh, from the Sheriff 6040 fund is $582.79. And Michelle also wanted to highlight a payment made from uh, opioid funds to One City United for professional services in the amount of $30,436. All right, any discussion or questions, board? Hearing none, this is a resolution. Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Veter. All? Yes. Balin? Yes. Little? Yes. Jelka? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. The uh, resolution is approved. Next, we'll receive project updates from department heads and elected officials. Good morning, board. Kathy Nicholas, engineer. Good morning. Uh, brief update on our roads. Our uh, we have a few staff members who out who are out mowing on the paved road system that started just very recently within the last couple of weeks. We're making good progress as the grass continues to grow. Uh, tomorrow we will have. A deck pour on our Cedar Wapsie project and I just wanted to show you a photo of that in case any of you have time if you'd like to come out and take a look at this tomorrow I need help I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> it was there it's all right so here's the current condition of the bridge if you'd like to come out tomorrow about 730 weather permitting Probably a good part, portion of the morning tomorrow we will be, be placing concrete. This is the Cedar Wapsie Road bridge over Crane Creek. Uh, this is the deck replacement. You are more than welcome to join us. We can get you a hard hat and vest. Uh, just let us know. We'd love for you to come out there. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is that yesterday uh, Supervisor Little received a call from a resident on Rose Lane. I did was able to speak with her after after that I did receive a few photos I would like to go out there and look at that uh, Rose Lane is in the county however we have a maintenance agreement with the city of Waterloo to maintain the road so I'm not quite sure uh, the situation it possibly looks like a water main issue so I'll be looking into that and I can certainly report back to you uh, later in the week as far as we know that was nothing that we did when they talked about the cones and the different things that were out there and markings and that type of thing right because we're down. typically not out there because we have the maintenance agreement mm -hmm. so I'm not quite sure why no one knows who put the cones out there yeah mm -hmm. when she said she didn't say yeah. who she'd contacted but she did mention that she'd contacted others I did forward that to Noel Anderson at the city okay. as well that email so that would give you any help too I'll be checking into that and I'll get back to you to all of you thank you thank you thank you all right, any other department heads or elected officials for an update? Morning. Morning. And Mayor, HR director. So really quick, um, just want to give an update on our open enrollment progress. So we have over almost half of our workforce have completed their open enrollment through the new site on Ease. Uh, we've got about 12% that have started it and not completed it, and about 40% that have not started it. So we've been having a lot of meetings with workforce. Um, groups uh, such as the different departments across the county and it's all going really well just want to stress the importance of completing that for your beneficiaries with the life insurance um, as well as just to make your elections to confirm continue or make those changes so um, so far it's being received really well people seem to like the app or like the access to be able to see their you know benefits they've been made aware of all of their benefits that are made available to them some didn't realize we had other voluntary benefits so besides your typical traditional medical dental and vision so that's been a good experience so far so um, and then I also want to talk about policy review so we plan on meeting either next Tuesday after the board meeting or next Wednesday at 9 a.m. and it depends on how big that board meeting is for next week um, and we'll be covering um, some just kind of clean up policies and others that will require a bit more dialogue so um, Supervisor Schwartz and Supervisor Little are the ones that represent the Board of Supervisors on that policy review. And then we also have Grant Veter, myself, and Mike Trinan. So, 
Um, and then I think actually that's all I've got. So, um, oh, and the, go ahead. Sorry. What's the deadline for open enrollment? On uh, May 31st. Right. Thank you. Yes. From, oh, and Legal Shield. I'm sorry. Legal Shield, we just sent a communication. You all would have received this as well with that new enhanced plan. We'll have our representative on site this Thursday up here in the um, IT conference room from 10 to noon. And then over at Pinecrest, I might have gotten that wrong. Um, we'll be there in the afternoon. I might have had those flipped. But um, anyway, so we have employees signing up to, or at least not signing up, you can come in at any time to visit with him about utilizing legal services or identity theft uh, services as well. And then uh, I do have the final contracts that are coming um, to be signed by Chris. Those have already been approved, so they won't come back to the board other than to just be placed on file, and then they'll also be placed on file with PERB. So the last one that we have to send out is a ask of me that's unit six seven and eight that's attorney conservation and um, public health the others have been sent out for review by the unions for final kind of make sure there's no final adjustments and things like that so all right a lot going on in hr so thank you any questions at all thank you thank you <clears throat> all right other department heads good morning board caitlin emmerich public health director um, I would like to introduce our new uh, deputy director for public health this morning. Ty, you can come over. Would you? Um, I'm going to embarrass her by reading her bio. So, <laughs> so Ty um, comes to us from Buchanan County Public Health, where she served as the director since 2017. Um, she served as deputy director from 2014 through 2017, and has was a public health nurse from 2011 through 2014. Um, she comes to us with 23 years of experience as a registered nurse. In her role at Buchanan County, Ty developed robust experience in disease investigation, immunization promotion and administration, community health needs assessments, health promotion programming, emergency preparedness, budgeting, strategic planning, partnership development, and policy development. Ty also held positions as a pediatric nurse at St. Luke's Hospital and as a pediatric case manager at Visiting Nurse Association and as a practical nursing instructor at Kaplan University. Um, Ty serves on numerous boards and committees on various topics including employee wellness, substance use, opioid settlement funds, volunteer services, critical incident stress management, maternal health, public health preparedness, emergency services, and community health improvement. Ty was recognized by the University of Iowa College of Public Health as a 2022 Public Health Hero she also received the State of Iowa Immunization Champion Award in 2017. During her time at St. Luke's, she received the Rookie of the Year and the Story of, Excellent, Story of Excellence recognitions. She led Buchanan County through the transition of taking on the role of fiscal agent for a 14-county service area, including our own Black Hawk County, ensuring that public health preparedness and EMS funding would continue to be available to the counties in the service area. Ty's educational preparation includes a Master of Public Health from Des Moines University, which is an accredited program by the Council on Education for Public Health. She also received a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Mount Mercy College and an Associate's Degree of Nursing from Kirkwood. Um, Ty brings a wealth of local public health experience to Black Hawk County Public Health. I'm very excited to have her join our team. Her first day was yesterday. Is there anything you'd like to share? Not really. That was a really nice bio. I just want to thank you all for the opportunity to work here in Black Hawk County. I really look forward to working with a great group of people that I met yesterday and hopefully can continue to work with and remember their names. There's a lot of them. I came from a department of four, including myself, so this will be a big change for me. Thank you. Well, welcome to Black Hawk County. We're happy to have you. Yes. All right. Gabby DeWitt, Marketing Coordinator. Uh, I just wanted to touch base with the board uh, regarding the CGI video digital project. Um, I've talked to a couple people, but not really gotten any good direction on which way we should go. We're at a point to start planning the video showcase, but I just wanted to find out from you if, if it's as simple as you want me to update the letter and keep going forward, or if you would prefer to have it as an agenda item next week, um, I can do that as well, but I just wanted to get some direction. What's the desire? Proceed. I, yeah, I think we can just continue to move forward with it. I don't think we need an additional agenda item unless there's. Yeah, as long as they don't 
I mean, if they mess up again, they're out. As okay. As I'm concerned. So, and I will go I'm ahead sorry, and you were up. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Three strikes. Yeah, and the pre prior the welcome letter had uh, Chris's name on it as the board chair. I mm -hmm. will just revise that to just Blackhawk County Board of Supervisors, and then have my name assigned to it as far as who they can contact. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And you've had that conversation, it sounds like, with them, or you've been? Yes, yep, yeah, we've been in communication, and I have a meeting next week with the producer to kind of start planning shots, but I wanted to just get some feedback from the board on, on what you wanted us to do. Was there anything we should do where there were some businesses, I think, that were kind of concerned or had indicated that, you know, I think thus contacting them or wasn't sure if it was really legitimate. Right. Is there anyone we should touch base with or? You can send them to me. Um, there is a press release pinned on our website to, to with some links and stuff in it. Um, it is, you know, a marketing project, so they will be solicited for sponsorships. They can say no, but if they do decide to do it, then their logo is around the videos. But if anybody has any questions, um, that last week it just came up when I was out of the office, so unfortunately. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted to mention is uh, all of the departments are getting really excited about having um, some videos about them. And so we are doing some elections videos to prepare for the elections, uh, the primary election coming up. And I got to go out with Griffin and get some video of him hydro seeding and mulching on Friday. And that was a lot of fun. So follow our Facebook page. That's good stuff. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any other department heads or elected officials wish to provide an update this morning? Yeah, Chris, Mike Hendrickson, uh, Director of Blackhawk County Conservation. Yes. Uh, I would like to uh, just quickly run over our ARPA projects and, and kind of give you an update as to where we are with all of those. I believe conservation, if I counted right, I think we have nine projects on board for ARPA. And so very quickly, I'm gonna start with the ones that are basically finished. Um, first of all, the Hickory Hills wastewater treatment facility. Um, we are literally just waiting for vegetation to grow so that we will comply with the SWIP permit. And that project is finished. That, uh, that system has been operating since last summer. And um, so we just need some grass to grow and that one, that one is finished. Um, we did take possession of the minibus um, several weeks ago. Uh, it was literally yesterday taken to a company to be wrapped. And when that's all finished, I will do a presentation to the board so that you can see all the Hartman characters and everything that uh, encompasses the wrap that's being put on it. Uh, and we are lining up a, a very tight schedule for everything that that bus will be doing. So we're very excited about that. Um, the Sigal Cove shower facility uh, is finished. Our staff finished the sidewalk uh, just a couple of weeks ago, the ADA sidewalk. Um, great uh, addition to that little park and people are already, we're already getting comments, positive comments from that. So very happy with that. The Blackhawk Park shower facility, uh, that was some renovation inside, putting some floor drains in and, and partitions and things like that. Uh, we would have done the walkthrough last week had the river not come up into the park. So we will reschedule that with the contractor and uh, it is basically finished. Um, now with the projects that are still, uh, you know, in place, starting with the Cedar Valley Nature Trail, the nine and a half miles of paving. Um, the contractor has started on that again at the 1st of May. He is doing his prep work for the asphalt company. They will begin work on that nine and a half miles of asphalting around the middle of June. They think it will take them a couple of weeks if the weather's good. Shoulder work will, will take place and then that will be done. Um, Division two, the bridges. We are, uh, I'm not there today because in just a few minutes, we're going to have a pre-construction meeting with our engineer right here in our office. So we will get that kicked off after today. Um, that's bridges in the North unit uh, and, and some asphalt paving there. The HVAC system here at the uh, administrative headquarters is under contract. We've had our pre-construction meeting and um, they are preparing to move forward with that project. Um, let me see on my list here, the ADA playground. Uh, we are under contract with that staff as we speak today are pouring pads, concrete pads. Um, we wanted to put as much of that money towards playground equipment as we could. So we are covering the cost of the concrete pads, but those will all be ready. Playground equipment, they tell us is somewhere around four to five weeks out to be delivered. And then the company will come in. They say they can install everything if we're ready uh, within two weeks. So all four of those play equipment areas will be done. Uh, in two weeks once they get the equipment. 
Um, McFarland Park septic system. We finally got uh, notice from the DNR. Our engineer has gotten the permitting that we needed to move forward with that project. That will be a new septic system for that park. And so that is underway. And I think I have hit, the only other thing then was the, uh, the Wi-Fi at Big Woods Lake and we are moving forward with that. We've just had a few uh, uh, little glitches with getting that under contract, but we're just about ready to go. So we are almost under contract with all nine projects. Do you have any questions at all? Hmm. Oh, that's great. Yeah, thank that's you, Mike. Great yeah. news. Thanks, Mike. All right, any other department heads or elected officials wish to provide an update this morning? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to the minutes approved from the May 7th, 2024 meeting. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, minutes are approved. There will be two uh, hearings coming up, um, a 905 and a 907. Uh, both are hearings on fiscal year 25 uh, crack ceiling projects. Those will be a little bit later in the agenda. Uh, next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. This will be approved with a, a single resolution. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, uh, roll call please, Mr. Veter. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Donka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. The resolution is approved. Uh, we'll move on to item eight. This is contracts and agreements. This is a resolution to approve amending the professional services contract with Modus Engineering of Waterloo, Iowa. Uh, for the Conservation Administration Office HVAC system replacement project for Black Hawk County and utilizing American Rescue Plan funds for the construction uh, administration services. Contract amendment number one for construction administration, administration services for this project is not to exceed an amount of $5,500 for said services. The same has been approved by the Conservation Board and recommended by for approval by the Board of Supervisors uh, utilizing American Rescue Plan funds. So moved. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion or questions? Hearing none, this is a resolution. Uh, roll call, please, <clears throat> Mr. Veter. Little? Yes. Jonka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Leland? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. The resolution is approved. Move on to section nine. Uh, this is item A. This is a motion to direct the county auditor to advertise for a public hearing slash bid opening to be held at 9.05 a.m. on May 28, 2024 in boardroom 201 of the Blackhawk County Courthouse, 316 East 5th Street, Waterloo, Iowa, on the proposed purchase of body-worn and vehicle-mounted cameras and digital evidence, evidence management system. Morning, Board. Value uh -huh. IT Director, uh, just here in case you have any question, questions for me. Any questions? Would someone like to offer a motion? Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion or questions? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion carries. And next, we'll move on to item B. This is discussion, possible board action, approval to establish a committee. Uh, to be named later that focuses on representing the needs of a diverse workforce and community, eliminating barriers to overcome inequities, and intentionally creating a space for individuals to feel welcomed and valued in Black Hawk County. Uh, we had, um, I've been meeting with uh, uh, Amanda and, and Gabby initially, and then we talked to uh, a department head meeting uh, last week, and this was really you know, recognizing, you know, we this is uh, the most diverse county um, in the state of Iowa. And we want to, you know, just make sure that we're um, doing all the things that we reasonably can to, to make this, uh, you know, an inclusive environment um, through all the services that, that we deliver and making sure that we're looking at it through all the different lenses uh, that, that people come to um, this courthouse or any of our buildings uh, with to seek services, as well as, um, uh, is the overall um, kind of environment that we that we have here um, amongst our, our workforce. So I'll let uh, Amanda add some to that. Sure. So thank you. So this uh, did come before us recently. There's just been more interest from employees, department heads from our office as to how we advance our efforts um, when it comes to representing and meeting the needs of a diverse community and workforce. 
that fosters that inclusive atmosphere, not only internally, but externally. So that's where this committee concept was really um, developed, or I guess kind of that idea as to bring together um, a multiple uh, perspective voices to kind of assist and participate in this effort to increase our our efforts around how do we become a sense of belonging and, and increase that. I know we talked about it with our um, our logo and our rebranding and a lot of the uh, messaging and that was around um, how do we kind of act more as one and uh, unify under that logo as well and what that really represents and means. So this kind of takes that even a step further. It aligns well with our strategic planning, I believe, that we're going to be talking about next um, as currently our strategic plan doesn't really highlight or reference a lot of the um, areas that I think we could improve and, and just understand better when it comes to serving the needs of our communities and our employees. So there's been a lot of um, great suggestions already. And again, the committee can be made up of really anybody that's interested in participating in this type of work. It doesn't have to be just leaders. It can be, I would like you know to be a, a range of uh, levels of employment here, everything from uh, frontline staff to frontline supervisory to a department head um, and then we want to open it up to all departments so we do anticipate this to be a larger committee it wouldn't be limited to like five or something like that um, but I sent you guys just some suggestions or what I kind of feel this committee could focus on um, as for the name we just felt that that was something the committee should help to determine there's a lot of different titles that can be put around this and then that's something that we could come back to the board and for their final approval on the actual name of the committee. So we hope this aligns well with the strategic plans in the future um, and that it does represent you know, our workforce in our communities and the services that we provide and continue to work towards that inclusive and welcoming and belonging um, feel that Black Rock County has and that we just continue to highlight that and focus on it with this committee. So. Well, between the two of you, I think you've kind of addressed my pro my questions with it because it wasn't really that we had concerns or that we weren't doing it. It's just mm -hmm. that we can all do something better or make it more inclusive and recognize the efforts that we all probably can make instead of just the HR department or mm -hmm. groups. I know we've talked about the recruitment and retention and, and how critical that is for an outreach into the community and thinking we're doing it, but yeah, always looking at ways to improve, so I appreciate that. I was wondering when you said committee, Mm -hmm. um, too, because like to say to open that up to everyone, there might be a lot more people I would think um, interested in being a part of it and didn't want to really see it limited, but right. knowing that could be tough too to have a really large group and ever. So our plan if, gotcha. if this moves forward would be to kind of send out communication and just solicit interest, um, you know, and if we would get a large number of interested um, parties, you know, contributing, then we probably would have to limit it to some degree. Um, one thing we talked about, uh, you know, if we have one department that is heavily interested over another department that doesn't have, you know, as much interest or maybe not, um, maybe it's outside their comfort zone, whatever may be that barrier, but trying to just make it where at least we have somebody from each department and it's not too heavily, um, you know, not all of conservation or not all of public health or not all of law enforcement because we want that well-rounded experience. That's really important to the services we provide and that we can kind of as a organization learn from each other and network as to you know while this area of this type of work might make sense for law enforcement it doesn't necessarily make sense for elections or for treasurer or for public health so um, definitely hoping to have a, a you know a good amount of interest from the different departments but we'll send that out and then um, we hope to have what I think a first meeting yet this month mm -hmm. um, and so we'll be working with Chris and Gabby to get that organized but um, and we discussed if there is kind of an overwhelming interest, one thing that we could do um, is identify folks from different departments as alternate members because, you know, things come up and you have to miss meetings and then that just kind of increases the reach of participation that mm -hmm. we could have. And I think it was also even mentioned subcommittees was another example where maybe, you know, there's just a significant interest from, say, public health who this work is uh, so important to their mission and everything that they carry out. Um, but that if they have a strong response that that might be a subcommittee of this that they could have that could target some of their services a little bit more or their workforce um, and be tailored to them a little bit but do we yeah. see this as a policy and changing or need for policy at all or is this just addressing for the most part kind of behavioral I think I mean we could see policy recommendations come out of it Good. definitely yeah so 
Um, and I would say too, again, kind of falling in line with the strategic planning, I think that can help to establish um, that, like where we're heading. And again, it's not that their efforts haven't been done right now, it's just more putting it on paper, making a commitment to it, and then demonstrating those actions and sharing those achievements uh, is an area that I think we could just, uh, that this committee could help us with. So, because we do have examples of things that we've done, um, they've kind of been done more on an individual department basis that we could kind of bring up and elevate it to the organization as a whole that may be used in other areas, so. But yeah, I appreciate your guys' consideration for, uh, for this effort and appreciate Gabby and Chris for the discussions and dialogue in the department heads. And uh, we will be looking forward to seeing this get approved and starting the committee. I just have one question. Yeah. So many county cities with different ones have diversity inclusion mm -hmm. committees or groups and that type of thing. You didn't choose to call it that or is it um, we I think it it's, broader or something different, I guess, too? I think what we really wanted to, I mean, lots of times in this work, um, uh, you don't know what you don't know. I mean, you don't know what lenses like other people see things through um, that you don't catch. And so that's why we, I kind of intentionally really wanted to kind of gather that more collective input on you know, what's the most effective um, kind of naming uh, for this group. Um, and then we would, you know, have to bring that back to the board. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Not that it couldn't, it could end up being called something mm -hmm. like that. Absolutely. Sure. sure. Um, it could be, you know, it could be called something different, and it could. It just kind of depends on what I think the committee feels, you know, resonates best, and is received, you know, in a way that um, sometimes those efforts can get, I guess, that DEI. I know we have. Um, at the state level and different things where that's not as accepted and there's actually measures being taken away um, from a DEI a coordinator or a position, especially at the higher education um, systems and things like that. However, we just feel it made more sense for not us to decide that and even not for the board, but get that feedback from the committee as to what makes sense for Black Hawk County. So. Mm -hmm. And the brand that you're kind of looking at, so right. that the community gets it, I guess, mm -hmm. when understand. But, but certainly, if that's okay. if it's if it's a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee, then and if that's what everybody agrees to, or if it's something that highlights more belonging or inclusivity, um, you know, we're going to let the committee kind of vet that out mm -hmm. and uh, help guide them to that naming. So, and mm -hmm. then come back to the board. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the intentionality of it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times it's something that folks feel like. Oh, we're doing a good job, and so let's just keep doing what we're doing. Um, but to take a critical eye, not in a not in a in a deconstructive way, right? But to take an eye towards policies, take an eye towards the environments in which we're hiring folks. Um, I think it's I think it shows a really good trajectory for the county uh, for us to be thinking about inclusion in this way. So, yep, and I'm hopeful that we'll uh, get a lot of interest. I think we already have um, some that are ready to kind of submit their interest and yeah it's uh i think it's going to be a great committee and one that uh will just again highlight what we're doing and also we can learn and evolve and and grow from there and then it will align really well i think with the strategic planning as you guys look at your vision and um you know the mission of black hawk county i would expect this will be addressed and incorporated in there as chris said we have a very diverse community that we serve so yep. all right Thanks. any other questions thoughts do you want to add anything? Nope. All right. Thank Would someone you. like to offer a motion? Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, uh, to establish the committee. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion or questions? Uh, hearing none, uh, roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Drilka? Yes. Hall? Yes. <coughs> Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Short? Yes. Resolution is approved. All right, next we'll move on to discussion, possible board action, that the board solicit a proposal for auditing services with Clifton Larson Allen, LLP, Alexandria, Minnesota, including a three-year time period with the option of a two-year annual extension. I know that uh, Michelle Kuhn is not here today, but um, I had had just a brief discussion with her about the auditing services and um, just kind of the limited number of, of options that are that are out there um, to choose from and that it might be beneficial to um, this, uh, solicit a proposal from Clifton Larson um, to continue with them. 
I think we've been pleased with the work and the working mm -hmm. relationship with the staff and has made it easier as well, like having a, something in place. Um, and I think when we did this last year, I think they were so busy they weren't able to make a proposal. Mm -hmm. And it was really kind of, we'd have to be go out and try to find someone again. I'm not sure if that's where we're at again. It could be because right. they seem to have more work than projects. But. This would be the time to do it, right, if we wait. Oh whole lot longer we're gonna yep. get back into yeah. a whole other audit process so yeah. yeah so we'd like a motion for that or is anybody yep. else questions mm -hmm. comments I guess what are thoughts yeah I'd, I'd entertain a motion if there's nothing yep. other questions okay I'll make the motion second all right it's been moved and seconded to solicit a uh, proposal for auditing services with Clifton Larson Allen, LLP of Alexandria, Minnesota, uh, mm -hmm. including um, a three year time period with uh, the option of two annual extensions. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Hall? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Little? Chris, did you say we're going to put it out for bid? I, no, this is to solicit a proposal from them, from, from Clifton Larson. Uh, not so we're not going to we're not going to bid, gonna bid the services in. That is correct. If 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 you're voting yes on this. Okay. No. Velka. Yes. Short. Yes. Resolution is approved. All right. Item D. This is discussion. Possible board action uh, regarding uh, strategic planning. Uh, we did have. Um, the one uh, presentation from, from Mr. Gannett, mm -hmm. um, say his last name correct, right, I believe? Garnett, I think it's Garnett. Garnett. Yeah, that's right, Garnett. Um, and I know some, some on the board would have some familiarity with the last um, strategic plan that was um, done, I forget the, the name of the UNI Institute. IDM. IDM, yes. And so it's um, really, I mean, it's a question of, um, do we are we ready to make a decision to go with one or the other do we need more information from them um i thought this this last week i'd have a little more time to dig in and research on this and i but i did not <laughs> um, i'm i'm writing three federal usda grants and it's a lot of work but um but it's um so really i, I just like uh you know the board's input on on what decisions we're ready to make or what more information that we need to make that decision. Did, did we get much back from you and I? No. I, I don't recall. I, mean, I no. remember them sending out the survey. They did. It's just the survey. Uh, the questions and we all five did and everyone, yeah. they were very pleased. I mean, as we were, I think that all five, they got responses yeah. from all five of us too. Um, and um, they had told us at the time that they were going to be busy until May, that there was no way they could come because I, mm. when I had approached them, I'd ask for kind of like that 30 minute commercial if they could come mm -hmm. in and just meet with the board and tell us, you know, what they propose and how that would work or what they would be doing. And um, they apparently didn't have the time to do that. So that's why we did the question and answer thing and got that from them. And the last I heard, I pulled back that email that I'd gotten from Drew. Um, which is really where we wanted to start. I think when we first said, could you come in and do the commercial, it was like recognizing then some of the levels of questions that they were going to be, when, when did we want to involve the public, or if we did, how many, mm -hmm. who, and that type of thing. But And the things that I, I know from working with them last time, and one of the things that, a um, couple of things they mentioned, I guess, were who should be represented on the planning team, who would be responsible for working with the facilitators to develop a draft plan. And I thought, well, that was going to be all of us. I mean, for the most part, working with the facilitator, it wasn't going to be someone designated. And I think that's really what we'd had before. There'd been one supervisor in particular, I think, that worked with them and kind of coordinating things. And um, also, I think for the most part, there was probably only two supervisors that attended all the meetings. So it was a much different exercise sure. than what we were planning, I think. Um, um, their last question was what time horizon will the strategic plan cover for the years three, five, or ten, that type of thing, I think, because it had been a long one previously. I think right. when they started, and I could be wrong on some of the dates, I think it was like in 2008 they'd done the initial and then um, come back in 13, and that's when I was here and part of it, so when we did kind of a, an up on the plan. but. 
Um, I know after he sent this email um, at the end of April, it said, sorry about requesting all the details, trying to get around the county's needs, but he said it probably would be easier for us to have a conversation. Yeah. And I said, <laughs> yeah, I, I think, but no. it's, yeah, so I don't know. I, uh, you all know, like I said, I think, um, I thought Ted Garnett, I, he did a much different exercise. It was much more, mm -hmm. I shouldn't say intense, but from a strategic planning standpoint that I've gone through those exercises, we all have, I'm sure, in different organizations mm -hmm. and groups. And um, his method was much different. Um, to me, it was a little more intense, but mm -hmm. I uh, liked that, I guess, yeah. just because it would have five different personalities to draw out that information and be very direct. and. That was one of the things I have um, liked about it. The other, as I've thought about it, because we've had so much time really to think about it, was the fact that I know we talked about strategic planning years ago with staff and staff kind of working through it. And some of that was more budget related. And um, it was still difficult for staff to do that when you kind of have to walk that fine line of working for the board and then, you know, pulling that information. And so I kept reflecting back on that and I. Uh, then really kind of related that to IDM, I think. I don't know if all of us have worked with them, but we've all been involved with them, know them well. They've worked with us on, not only on this, but in other areas we've all had those relationships. And I thought of a, as a, I don't know that it'd be a, a strength or some um, resource for us, for someone that didn't know us and our personalities and to pull us together or however that worked or pull out that information and without thinking about our personalities and our feelings and how they needed to be sure to get consensus by us being in agreement that it could be difficult. That could be entertaining. It, <laughs> yeah, pay per view. <laughs> well, it might be people pay for it, but I yeah. just thought it puts them, I thought, in an awkward position, I guess, to do that with us. But I just wondered if maybe, and my um, thoughts were just that maybe uh, Ted Garnett, who didn't know us, would mm -hmm. do that more directly and walk away and not be you know, someone we'd work with next week or next right. month or whatever. Yeah. So I appreciated that outward, um, mm -hmm. I guess, counsel or something, something like that. But, um, and then I think there's also a piece to it that working to get us, it was something that we didn't do and I don't know that IDM would do, but I know with our previous um, work, uh, work, and I think you've all taken a look at this, when we've done it, it, and it was no fault of theirs. I'm not saying any fault of ours either, but the, the follow-up and the doing the work and that, everybody got busy with what they do, and it was, it ended up in being something that sat more on the shelf and was there, and some have utilized it. Some of the departments were good. Some were, you know, struggling with trying to make those things work. So it was also a different approach, and so that's... Yeah, I mean, I think, I think a, a key point <laughs> to ensure that it doesn't just become a, a document that sits on the shelf is to give it a shorter lifespan. So I, I mean, I think a three year makes sense. We can be held. The goals are a little bit more attainable in a three year than a, I mean, a 10 year, you know, 10 years ago, oh. any of us, yeah. right? Like everything was just so different. And, right. even and so five. even five, five needs to be yeah, three, yeah, three really does feel like, um, an opportunity for us to keep that document fresh, keep it sort of top of mind, a little bit more so. It's never gonna be, a strategic plan is never gonna be this mm. this thing that mm. literally drives every single decision, but hopefully it's a lens in which we can mm -hmm. um, we can approach problems. I'm comfortable with a three year. I, I agree with your point about there might be some real value in having someone who's not associated mm -hmm. sort of locally, right? That 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 knows, that, that doesn't have to worry about seeing us at the grocery store, right? And they can just sort of say what it is versus having to do the political dance and, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. um, because, that, you know, that, 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 gets, that gets a little tough. It, granted, it is now May, so maybe you and I could. Uh, find the time to present. Well, I think what bothered me was that some of the, the questions they were asking were the things that we were going to have difficulty in. We were expecting them yeah. to pull up, or someone to pull mm -hmm. that from us and working with us, not just us yeah. say, this is what we want, this is how we want it done, this is who will be facilitating with you. It's going to be finding out what five people want. Yeah. And that's where I kind of went. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the other thing, and obviously I kind of lean toward Garnett for several reasons that I've mentioned to you, that 
that Lynn County, you know, I use them, Story County had different ones that spoke well of them leading mm -hmm. a county initiative. Mm -hmm. But then um, as I, we talked to others, individuals, then we had some staff even, I know Caitlin mm -hmm. particularly had worked with him. And so mm -hmm. it was not just hearing from a supervisor's perspective or someone in the county that said, yeah, they did a great job. It was hearing about that. And I don't know if that's anything you'd want to speak to or comfortable at speaking to, to share with good, bad, or ugly. Yeah, sure, I'm happy to. Um, obviously, I haven't worked with um, IDM, so I don't have anything to compare to, but I have worked with Mr. Garnett um, when I was an employee at uh, Lynn County. And I have um, probably, like yourselves, been through a couple different iterations of strategic planning. And if I had to rank all the different facilitators, I'd say he's at the top of the list for ability to pull out what um, the really important things are and to be able to help prioritize what those are because everybody wants everything. I think he used the pet something example um, uh, during his presentation. And so I would really look forward to working with him again, mm -hmm. if given the opportunity. Yeah, yeah it seemed like uh, one thing that I kind of picked up on kind of personality wise that I liked, um, uh, you know, oftentimes when there's a more delicate subject or something people avoid it they dance around but he seemed to be the kind of guy that would name the thing mm -hmm. um in the room and so i think that would be really beneficial yep. till, till i'm in mm. yeah, yeah. Well, till he does it what yeah <laughs> any thoughts on mm. good bad or ugly And some of the, something that I'd written down, and I think I'd even talked about it when we, I was eager to hear when we'd had a department head meeting and they shared comments and, and things, was he was mentioning and he said, without planning, because you have a good team, without planning you'll get two or three things done because you have good people. With planning you'll get seven to ten things done. And over time this makes a difference. And I just thought since we're <clears throat> looking at kind of making a difference in what we can do and how we're doing things differently and touching obviously on something that we did earlier as far as inclusivity it's just that that's kind of what we're trying to do i guess and make that difference but well i think we essentially have basically we've got two decisions or two directions i see that we could go we could either make the decision today of who to go with or we could put kind of if because we don't want to wait too much longer um if see if if idm could present within two weeks we could we could give them that kind of option too but i'm but i'm perfectly comfortable uh, going with mr garnett yeah uh, yeah how comfortable are you, you know, i am make sure you're comfortable i'm too. good okay how about you tom yeah i think it'd be great yeah. really do all right. So that sounds like we. Uh, yeah. Make all right. Would someone like to make the motion? I would. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded uh, to. I guess I'll say pursue the services of Mr. Garnett for his strategic planning. Sure. Get him see what what's on his schedule and what he can do with us quickly, hopefully, <laughs> or to get started. I mean. yeah. We can start a Netflix sitcom and generate oh. royalties for the county. Yeah, we need those new revenue streams. Supervisors used to yeah. many years ago I have some of those entertaining uh -huh. meetings now. Yeah, back to that. So you uh, need a resolution? <laughs> or is it just motion, did you say? Um, uh, good. Yeah, we've had a motion. I'll, I'll do a resolution. Um, uh, roll call, please, Mr. Beater. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Jalka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. The resolution is approved. Uh, it is now uh, 9.48 uh, a.m. Uh, this is a hearing slash bid opening of the proposed fiscal year 25 crack ceiling project. Uh, first is a motion to receive and place on file proof of publication uh, May 4, 2024, uh, notice of public hearing. So moved. Second. Both second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Well, suppose motion carries. Next is a motion to close the hearing after oral and written comments are received. So moved. 
Second. Any uh, written comments, Mr. Beater? No, sir. All right, let's see if we hear oral comments. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Next is the bids to be received, open and read. The bid deadline was 3 p.m. Monday, May 13th, 2024. Looks like we received four electronic bids. Is this the um, LL7725 or the 7525? 7725. It's oh. the crack filling. The crack filling. Oh, yeah, the crack filling and seal. Okay. Okay, okay, we do have something. Look good. And we, I should say it is crack filling, which is a little bit different technique than crack sealing. We yeah. switched to, to our vendors doing crack filling now. And the uh, engineer's estimate was $172,353.60. So uh, our first bid is from Farner Asphalt Sealers, uh, $483,043.08. They are, they are on the screen, so I won't repeat that. Uh, the second bid comes from Denco Highway Construction Corporation, $157,941.68. Uh, third bid is Asphalt Surface Technologies Corporation, uh, $216,560. And then the final bid, number four, is American Pavement Solutions Incorporated, $192,000. $919.40. What's the location of yeah. these? Uh, uh, Farner, I believe, is uh, Fort Dodge, I believe, or I am not sure on that one. Okay. Kathy, have we used any of them before? Yes, we've used, I think we've used I'm not quite sure about asphalt surface technologies, but uh, Farner we've used, Denco does all, all of our grouting. And then I believe last year, wasn't last year's been American Pavement Solutions. Okay. Quite a range. Thank you. Be yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see. <laughs> Did you have, sorry, locations on Denco, Aztec, and American Pavement? American Pavement Solutions, I believe, is Green, was, Bay. Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, Denco's here in Iowa, aren't they? Iowa. They're in Iowa. Farner's in Iowa. And the last one, I'm not too familiar with them. Bidder. Ryan's saying they're a new bidder. It's all over the board. Right? Yeah. It's all over the board. That's what I mean. I wonder if they include the same things. That'll be interesting. I think there's gold flakes in the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must be. <laughs> Filling with what? <laughs> that's all we have for that one. Okay, so that's it. So, need a motion? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, a motion that the Board of Supervisors review and place on file the bids to allow time to receive, review said bids as recommended by Kathy Nicholas, County Engineer. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Uh, it is now 9.53 uh, a.m. This is a hearing slash bid opening on the proposed fiscal year 24 seal coating project. This is a motion to receive and place in file proof of publication, May 4th, 2024, notice of public hearing. So moved. Second. It moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Next is a motion to close the hearing after oral and written comments are received. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, any uh, written comments, Mr. Beater? No, sir. Any oral comments? Let's see. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, uh, the motion carries. Next, to, uh, the bids will be received, open and read. The deadline was 3 p.m. Monday, May 13th, 2024. I did want to clarify that this is an FY25 uh, oh. seal coating project. I'm sorry, there's a typo on the mm. agenda. 
and the engineer's estimate was $132,155. We'll proceed with the uh, paper bids first. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We d our electronic bid is from Farner Asphalt Sealers. $139.60. Curry. Uh, the, the second bid is from Prairie Road Builders, Hazleton, Iowa. They have submitted the bid bond, Uh, third bid comes from Stable Construction Company, Harlan, Iowa. They have also submitted the bid bond. Next bid is from Blacktop Service Company, uh, Humboldt, Iowa. They have submitted the bid bond. $107,195.107,195.00. Kathy, did you say they were from Harlan? Uh, Blacktop Services is from Humboldt, Humboldt? Iowa, is okay. what they're... It shows Cedar Falls on here. Yeah, uh, the actual proposal shows Humboldt, Iowa, and I believe yeah. that's the correct you want it location. To okay. okay. <clears throat> uh, the last bid comes from Manats Incorporated, Brooklyn, Iowa. They have submitted the bid bond. $123,834.123,834.00. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next is a <clears throat> motion that the Board of Supervisors review and place on file the bids to allow time to review said bids as recommended by Kathy Nicholas, County Engineer. So moved. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion carries. Next, item 10, this is any reports or information from the board? No reports or information other than, um, I was gonna say the chairman, of, or the chairman of the VA commission mentioned there were interviews set up for Monday and Tuesday. I didn't know, and I assumed whoever would attend probably would need to be at all five participate right. in those okay. I, I didn't know if that was going to work for anyone I just you said it's set up on Monday and Tuesday I think it was Monday and Tuesday yes I knew that wasn't going to be so easy when you had so many it was um, Monday the 20th from 2 to 3 because they're doing about 30 minutes per interview so that timeline was Monday the 20th, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Tuesday the 21st is 11.30 to 1 for the 3. Does that work for anybody? I was going to say I can, I can make it work too. 
I'm looking at my calendar. Yeah. What, was, what was the Tuesday time again? Um, Tuesdays were 11.30 to 1. You know, there's a 11.30 at 12 and 12.30. I think that, um, I think I can make make those work. I think it'd be good to have two of us just in case okay. someone, like, uh, can't be at all of it, then we can confer later, but okay. I can if I can zoom in. Yeah, they were going to have a Zoom link, and so they'd furnish that. So if yeah. that Dan, if, you, okay. if you'd like to do it, that'd be great. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll do it. All right. If it works, I will too. Then oh. if that works. Yeah. For your schedules. Yeah. Okay. Works. All right. All right. Uh, uh, the, I'll add just an update on the Middle Cedar River watershed. Um, one, I've got um, anybody that's interested in the big uh, hard copy of our of our plan. It's you know a good sized book right. and it's a lot of technical information. But if anybody wants a copy of that, I can get that to you. Um, I'm going to be submitting uh, copies to at least all the public universities in the state um, so that it has a place to live in perpetuity, um, just in case that <laughs> happens. But hopefully, we implement everything that's in that plan because we've got federal funds coming through. Um, and on that, I'm sure we're working um, uh, as a watershed uh, on a grant right now that would um, take the, the dues that, that we pay and other counties and communities pay and uh, leverage that and help us be able to hire a coordinator um, for the middle cedar river so i'll keep you all updated on on how that progresses um the other thing is um you know i i heard the news driving home on public radio yesterday about lawsuit and just um that there's a potentially an aclu class action lawsuit i just wanted to make sure that we have something on next week's agenda whether it needs to be a closed session or otherwise so that we can kind of get up to speed on on what's what's happening with that i definitely advise the be a closed session okay mm -hmm. i i can uh if it's possible to get right in a little bit more even on does it have to be tuesday or can we do one on third I, i'd like yeah. to know a little bit more Sooner, well, yeah. you know i think we're all starting already to hear some questions and i think yeah. it makes sense for us if if we can facilitate a thursday morning if that sure. works for folks sure i'm wide open yep i think it's important that it also work for uh sheriff thompson as well or at least somebody from the sheriff's office yeah sure. yeah i would anticipate he could make that work yeah okay. yeah i think we should well, go over thursday morning if yeah. that work for you too maybe yep because i'm mean, that's tricky okay at least try for it i guess we'll see yeah. how the schedule is and maybe there's another option he can throw out sure and I mentioned too the Humane Society. We've mm -hmm. given them; they're going to commit to the 28th. They'll be back here. Okay. So I'm just going to give an FYI to, on that. Perfect. And I did um, go to Elevate, visit Elevate the other day, and I had just mentioned to Bob Lincoln, you know, that I was we had the opioid funds, and I was kind of surprised they hadn't submitted something mm -hmm. because they have so many programs that they're dealing with. And he said, if the board was interested at all, he'd put together like a one page document for us to see if you were had more interest in him doing something further. And sure. so I just started doing that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell him yeah. to prepare. Okay. Those Thank you. Those are of God's and what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Any other uh, reports or information from the board? Uh, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Yes, we moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.